Hey cycling community, this is Steve, Grusus the Cycling Greek. Originally, this video is going to be about me, food, heat, and AFib. As I was putting together, this melded into more of a life update. So I'm going to be as pithy as I can. Item number one, Casa de Grusus. We are moving in four weeks. We're moving from a 2,000 square foot plus home on two and a quarter acres to a 1,500 square foot home where the backyard fence is 10 feet away from the house. Now this is going to come as a shock to our four little ankle biters, but that's going to be an advantage for us in that. That means we're going to have to go out and walk them. One of the main benefits of this move is health oriented. The Fetching Mrs. Cycling Greek works remotely, she's a homebody, and she's more of a keep to herself type of person as opposed to me where I'm, you know, pretty much the opposite. So she doesn't get a lot of interaction with people and being in that community, which is called Tesoro, uh, they're very community oriented. There's a lot of different functions, concerts, things like that going on. Uh, there's other activities that she and I can do. Uh, so that'll be something different because usually we're just out here and and I get a lot of interaction from, uh, you know, from my bike riding and training, but she doesn't do that. So uh, I'm hoping for good things when we move. All right, so moving in four weeks, which means that my season ends in four weeks, and I'll go into off-season. And that leads to item number two, racing. There's a race coming up next week, and I signed up for it, and, I, and it's a race that I've been looking forward to doing, but I'm not going to do it. The reason I signed up is that participation has been dropping these past few years, and so this is my way of uh, donating to the cause a little bit. The reason I'm not doing that race is because I am fully invested in my coaching of this one young woman and her goals. And we train together and I get more enjoyment from training with her than I'm doing from racing right now. Although when I went to go sign up for the race, I was getting real excited because it, I'm going into that atmosphere and seeing who signed up and, and you know all that stuff. But still, I'm training here. I first started working with Natalia in November of last year. And it quickly became evident that she was a coach's dream athlete. She's tremendously goal-oriented, tremendously disciplined, but not to the point of uh, blind faith. She does a huge amount of research, and she's highly intelligent. In fact, she's gotten me to change how I look at a couple things. Her first goal was about a month ago. It was a 155-mile, 15,000-foot climbing event. That's time-based. She did it faster than she ever could have imagined. She set a time for herself here. I lowered it two weeks before the event to here, and she beat that by 10 minutes. Her next goal is in September. It is a USA Cycling Federation sanctioned race. She'll be doing Women's Cat 5, but it's 200 miles. It goes from Utah to Wyoming. So that means, unless there's something I'm not aware of, that our coaching relationship is going to end sometime in September. So I found myself starting to mentally prepare for that. Huh mentally, emotionally. Now this is the part where I'm not gonna be as pithy, so please just indulge me. When we first started working together, things just clicked. We had a common goal, it was easy to communicate, we just worked well together. Now the fetching list of cycling Greek would say that that's because that my emotional age is much, much younger than my chronological age. Well, be that as it may, we just had a lot of fun. About three weeks into the coaching, it became evident that she had passed me up. I was right about here in my cycling abilities, and she was right above me, right about there. And that was great for me. At that point, she became a training partner of mine. So one way to get better is you hang around better people. So it was like playing with a better tennis player. It was sometime after that, that coaching had shifted from coaching to coaching and being cycling buddies. And the reason for that is because of the type of person she is. Hanging around her just makes me want to be better. And I find that with some of my closest friends that have certain qualities. And fortunately, with the fetching of the cycling Greek too. I always got to keep up with her. Now you may be asking yourself, once coaching is done, that's it. What's the big deal? Well, we've been working relatively closely together for eight or nine months. And I'm just going to miss that connection. Which is why I'm starting to prep for it now. So now we jump to item number four. Food, heat, AFib, and me. Hold on. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've been trying to lose weight at the beginning of the season to get ready for these climbing races. So I was around 166 pounds, 
and I wanted to get down to at least 261. And I was doing that in slow fashion, and sometimes it seemed just to take forever, and the reason why I wanted to do it slow was because I didn't want to screw up on my power. I wanted to do this thing right. Eventually, I got down there at 161, and, and I was, you know, fairly happy. And uh, I kept up with my procedures. It was getting to like 160 pounds, and so I was good, so I stopped weighing myself, because I figured, okay, you're there. Now, this was months ago, and I've been keeping up with those procedures. And I decided to get on the scale a little while ago, and I came in at 157 pounds, because I was noticing I was getting even more lean. I tell you, one of the things I'm going to focus on during the, uh, during the off season is upper body lifting, just to get a little more, just to, you know, just to look better. So everything's going well with that until I did this ride a couple weeks ago and I was doing over under intervals on this uh, eight mile climb. And I was doing them early in the morning. There was a lot of humidity, more than we're used to here, but uh, the heat factor didn't seem to be that bad. So I get through just one set of intervals because I wanted to do three and I'm just out of energy. And so I decide, okay, maybe it was the heat and so I turn around, get back to the car, get my recovery drink, start to feel a little bit off. And by the time I get home, I was full on sick. I ate some more. I figured that I had caught some sort of bug and I was with some people on this other big ride that we were doing just, uh, just the other day, a couple days before. And I'm thinking, man, hope I didn't get them sick. I laid down after I ate some more and I was down for two or three hours. And, and I got up after that and I was feeling a lot better. So then I figured, you know, maybe it wasn't bug, maybe it was the hard workout and just being malnutritioned, didn't have enough uh, carbohydrates for it. So then I was trying to think, how did I get so undernourished with respect to carbs? Then it came to me. The fetching Mrs. Bruce's likes to keep a clean house. And I'm a messy person, so how she tolerates with me, I don't know. So with the sale of our house, or actually we were, before it went into escrow, and thankfully it's an escrow now, we had a lot of people seeing it, and she staged the whole house. If you ever seen our pictures on Zillow, she could be an interior decorator. So everything had to be clean all the time, which was a bit of a challenge for me. One of the things I like to do is take uh, sweet potatoes, slice them up, cook them in the microwave for five minutes. But when I do that, there's a tremendous amount of humidity that's created in the microwave, so there's a lot of cleaning that has to happen, and you miss stuff sometimes, and it takes a long time to clean it. And with our, you know, selling a house, there's a lot of things to do, and she doesn't want to have to worry about that. So, no more sweet potatoes over here for now. And also with bananas. I like them when they're kind of spotted, when they're just starting to turn. And bugs like them too. So, we don't want to have bugs around here, so no bananas. So, I thought I was, uh, you know, compensating for that, but apparently I wasn't. So now I'm doing things to help compensate for that. I feel a lot better and I'm doing these, these big workouts. I've been doing a lot of heat adaptation. So that includes going out when it's 104, 106 degrees. One time I was out there for a, for a longer ride at 110 degrees. And now that I'm able to do that, I'm starting to get adapted to the heat. Previously, we've had hot days, and then it go really low to very, very nice days, and it would switch back and forth. So finally, it stayed in the hot range area. So that's uh, so that's been a benefit, even though you know the nicer temperatures are nice. But the reason I do the heat adaptation is for racing, because uh, others may not be doing that I'm from the Central Valley. So anything that will give me an extra edge. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, I'm not racing, so the reason I'm doing this is so that I can keep up with Natalia on her long rides. We have a ride that's coming up this coming Saturday, for example, that's close to 130 miles. So we're going to be out there 10 hours. And the forecast is fortunately only 101 degrees, so that should be quite doable. But I need to make sure that I'm at the top of my game so I don't hinder her game at all. So that's the reason why I'm so focused on heat training. Uh, let's see what else is there. AFib. Okay, so I did this uh, another over under set of intervals on the four lane and, uh, in the heat. So I started off toward the end of the afternoon when it was a high of 104 degrees. So I figured, okay, I'll get one set of intervals in, but I got two sets. But on that second set, my heart rate was was pretty darn high. So usually when I'm doing those over under intervals, when I'm doing the overs part, when I'm going to VO2 max, my heart rate's getting into uh, 150, 152, you know, like the one, low 150s. 
but now it was creeping up on that second set to 160, 161. And my max heart rate is in the low 160s. So me being aphid boy, I started to get a bit concerned. So I figured, okay, two intervals is good. I can stop at that. And so that's what I did. Now I'm going to show you this Instagram clip that I made at the end of that particular workout. So I'll show you and then that'll be the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. And as always, remember, comment, like, subscribe, the cycling Greek. Now here's that clip. That was a good workout. Better than I thought it was going to be. I started off at the high of the day of 104 degrees and I climbed up to the bottom of the main workout climb in fast fashion. Then I did two sets on that climb two full sets. Well, actually, the first set was true over-unders, with the second set just being the overs because the unders had to go real under so I could keep going. But still, that was eight minutes total at VO2 max. Not bad. And that's only because of the training I've been doing in the heat to adapt to the heat.